from Washington. Great to have you on the show, Ben. So, Ben, do we know, first of all, what this technical issue actually was? They haven't said much beyond the fact that it's a technical issue, but we do know that it has basically forced air traffic controllers to enter, or for it, it's forced flight plans to be entered manually instead of automatically. And so that, as you might expect, is a slower process. So that's forced uh, air traffic control to basically slow everything down, keep some planes on the ground, and add some more space between uh, departures and arrivals just to accommodate uh, for what they're calling this technical issue. And it took more than five hours uh, for the issue to be fixed. Uh, but I'm guessing for many people, that has had a huge knock-on effect. I heard stories of people on tarmacs on the plane for five hours, some being cancelled, so others being told their flights was at 2 o'clock in the morning. Talk us, take, talk us through the, the knock-on effect here, outside of just the yeah, UK, it, critically. No, oh, of course. You know, it, yeah, it's not pretty. And, of course, from a UK perspective, it couldn't have come at a worse time, given that it's a, a ve very busy bank holiday where lots of of uh, people in the UK are traveling mostly home from summer vacations. So you add that to the mix and it does create a real uh, kind of nightmare scenario if you're trying to get back into the UK. But beyond that, it's, it's going to create some rip ripple effects. We see Amsterdam has a lot of delays today and cancellations. Now there could be issues there too, but how many of those planes were going to, to London or to Manchester? And I think that speaks to the ripple effect. Now that the, the technical issue has been resolved, it takes a while to queue up all of these flights to get them back to where they're supposed to be, to get the crews back where they're supposed to be, the planes. You have issues with with staffing, uh, with hours work before uh, you know crews can go over their legal limit for for how how long in a day they can work for as a safety concern. So the knock on for this is pretty significant, and it will affect uh, have some ripple effects beyond the UK, just as everything gets backed up and crews are out of place. So so we're going to see this for a while. Now the, the worst of this will be. Uh, in the UK over the coming days or flights to and from the UK in the coming days. Uh, but this won't be fixed this evening. It won't be fixed tomorrow, uh, barring any other disruptions or poor weather or things like that. Hopefully it should be getting better, but this is not, they fixed it in five hours, but things don't get better five hours later. And for people who are airports uh, watching this, Ben, uh, in terms of compensation, what can they be looking for? Look, I got, I got back from my kids at 1.30 in the morning. It was, I can tell you, it was tough. It was really tough. It's busy, it's end of summer. But if people are watching this, a situation like this was a technical glitch. In terms of compensation, can they ask for it? What are, what are the terms here? Yeah, so I think as far as, you know, at least from an American perspective, uh, the, the compensation rules in Europe tend to be fairly generous. Now, the problem here is that this is a problem that was uh, created outside the airline's control. This is a... Uh, a problem with air traffic control and nothing that the airlines could really do about it. So as far as additional compensation uh, for delays and that type of thing, you could always ask. You never know when you might be surprised with a pleasant answer, but this one I would have low expectations for. Now, what you should know is that the airline remains uh, on the hook to get you to your final destination or to give you uh, a refund of your flight if you decide to not to travel and uh, you know abandon the rest of your trip. So that in the Europe, you should be entitled to compensate, not compensation, but for uh, flight, food, val uh, lodging, that type of thing. Those are things you should ask for. But as far as the generous uh, you know, uh, payouts for a long delay, I would have less hopes for those. But do ask your airline to provide you for food with food vouchers, uh, ask if lodging is available. And you know, the one thing that we always say, I think this is true, whether no matter where in the world you're flying, if you're, if you're flying to London, and you know another flight that's operating that you might be able to get on. Ask to see if you can uh, be booked on that flight. Yeah. Uh, don't always assume the agents will know every option you have. Uh, if you can fly to uh, you know, a nearby city, if, if Gatwick instead of if Heathrow works, if, if City Airport or, or Luton, ask to go to any London airport or even a nearby city if you've driven in, in from somewhere else. Uh, do try to explore all of your options, but this is a case where the backlog is gonna be pretty severe uh, there won't always be a great answer for everyone, although we like to think there is. This is one where uh, sometimes you just may run out of options. Yeah, keep calm, explore your options. Very good advice. I know who would like to be in this conversation. That's Richard Quest. <laughs> ben, great to <laughs> see sure you. Have a lot to say about this. Oh, I'm sure he will have a lot to say indeed. Ben,